Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Dynasty. What I got for y'all today is another Mortal Kombat 11 video, and since the trailer dropped, I've been getting asked one question over and over again. That question being Dynasty. Who do you want to see inside of the Mortal Kombat 11 roster? So with that said, I said, hey, I'm going to go ahead and make you guys a wish list characters I would want to see inside of MK11. I did come up with a few guidelines for this wish list. For starters, Mortal Kombat X had a grand total of 36 characters, including DLC and every variation that Triborg had. So I said, hey, MK11 having 40 characters, it's not too far-fetched, right? So of course, this wish list is going to be... 40 characters, with 4 of those being guest characters, and 4 of those being brand new characters altogether. Never introduced up until now, so keep that in mind. And this is just my wish list. a reminder. Of course, there's not like a proper right or wrong answer when making this wish list. I'm, I'm bound to piss off a bunch of you guys because some of your favorites aren't going to make my list, and I'm sorry for that. Like I mentioned, it's, it's my wish list. Just don't get too personal. I'm so sorry if your guy does not make the final cut, or you're female. I love you, I'm sorry, again, I love you. So with that said, let's break this down and let's get into it. So first things first, the first character on our wish list is none other than Sub-Zero. What is a Mortal Kombat game without Sub-Zero? Of course, he's arguably one of the most iconic faces of the franchise. You have Scorpion, you always have Sub-Zero. I'm, so, you know, I'm still shocked that he wasn't killed inside the trailer. And I was thinking, of course, it's now confirmed that time bending and time travel or something time related is bound to be like the main focus of the story for MK11. What if we see current day Kwai Lang meet up with an old version of Bihan, his brother? And it's one of those things where it's like, hey, brother, I haven't seen you in ages. You're, you're dead, man. Like, like this is who you become. You're, you're new Saiba in my realm. I miss you. I love you. You're my brother. And we get like this really weird emotional, like fucking epic reunion. That would make me cry, because Sub-Zero is my favorite character. So if we could do something like that with this whole time-bending stuff, that would blow my mind. Seeing Bihan and Kwai Lang together fighting against evil, that is a possibility with this whole time-bending aspect introduced inside of Mortal Kombat 11. Now, the second character is going to be none other than Smoke. Now, of course, Smoke is now going by the name Nenra as a revenant. Of course, he does make a few cameos inside the MKX story, and a bunch of people want to see him added as a DLC character inside of MKX. So, why not give us this brand new revitalized version of Nenra of Smoke? I want to see this. It's human Smoke still, but he's possessed, he's evil, and he looks pretty damn badass in those cameos. Moving on to the third character, Rain. Rain is a character that's not been on the main roster and I don't know how long. Trilogy? It, has it really been that long since MK Trilogy? His redesign inside of Mortal Kombat X was amazing. I love that costume. Of course, he has that iconic roundhouse kick. I would kill to be able to use that roundhouse kick inside a modern game. He was DLC at MK9, but that was it. MK9, Trilogy. I need some more Rain in my life. Of course, Prince passed away not too many years ago. We need this in honor of Prince Ed Boon. Please, please, please put Rain inside of MK11. Moving on to the fourth character. The fourth character to be the most requested, I think, fan favorite character to make a return. That character is none other than Noob Saibot. After he went missing in Mortal Kombat 9, of course, there was that gigantic Soul Nado. He's fighting with Nightwolf. Nightwolf throws him inside the Soul Nado, and that's the last time we see Noob inside of a Mortal Kombat game, though there is an intro that Kung Lao has a Sub-Zero, he pretty much tells Sub-Zero that Noob Saibot is calling from him from the other side. We don't know what the other side is, and that's all we have to work with in terms of what's going on with Noob Saibot. So again, easily, without a doubt, the highly, like, the most requested character to make a comeback to Mortal Kombat is Noob Saibot. Now, speaking of making a comeback, what about making a spot on the roster? The fifth spot belongs to none other than Fujin. Outside of Noob, he is the most requested character for just being on the roster, being playable. He hasn't been playable outside of Mortal Kombat Armageddon and Mortal Kombat 4, and I don't think that's right. Of course, with Raiden being ruthless, being big, bad, and evil, trying to be just a ruthless protector, what's Fujin's stance on this? Is Fujin gonna evolve into what Raiden once was as like a friendly Earth Realm protector? If Raiden is just too busy getting caught up in his own madness and being crazy and being evil, I think that's a perfect spot for Fujin to have a bigger role in the story. And I really hope that they don't skip him this time around because, again, he was easily, outside of Noob Saibot, like the most requested guy to be inside of Mortal Kombat X. 
Moving on to the sixth spot, the first female on my list here is Jade. Again, a lot of fan favorites. She's been missing since Mortal Kombat 9, and without a doubt, she is the most requested female character to return to the roster. Her moveset was part of Katana's variation back in MKX. It was pretty fun to use, it was enjoyable, and again, outside of Noob, Saiba, and Fujin, Jade was right up there with those two. So I want to see Jade make a comeback. Where has she been since the events of MK9? Does her ending have anything to do with the role of this game's story? Time bending, that mysterious lady. What's going on with Jade? I'm curious. The seventh spot belongs to Serena. Of course, Serena was reintroduced with the MKX cameos that she had, and she's come a long way since her debut in Mortal Kombat Mythologies, becoming like an ally of the younger version of Sub-Zero. She is a demon freed from Quan Chi, what more could you ask for? Again, a character that we've never really even seen fleshed out too much inside the games, if I'm not mistaken, outside Mythologies, we had her inside of like a game on the GBA maybe, and Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and that was it, so I think she has a ton of potential and hopefully MK11, Serena has a role that's bigger than just popping up every once in a while in a cutscene because they're wasting her talents, her character design, and I really hope she has a big role inside of MK11. Moving on to my favorite female inside the franchise, number 8 spot belongs to a dead character, a dead female character, that being none other than Melina. Now, though she is dead, she could be reintroduced as like another clone from the Flesh Pits. If anything, we have this time bending aspect playing a major role in the story. So essentially, this time bending stuff is two dual universes, old timeline, new timeline, whatever's going on. Safe to say, Netherum Studios can use this like time bending loophole to bring back any character that they really want. And like I mentioned, there's the Flesh Pit story they could use. Oh, it's, you know, it's Melina number three, number, number five, number 57. Like, there's apparently other Melinas out there, hopefully. Maybe. I'm hoping. Maybe. So, Melina and MK11, I hope it happens. If not, I'm going to be kind of bummed out because she is my favorite female. Now, moving on to the ninth spot. The ninth spot belongs to an OG of the franchise, that being none other than the nut punch expert himself, Johnny Cage. We need humor. We need nut punches. I repeat, humor, nut punches. So... I think this might be the swan song for Johnny Cage. Cassie Cage was really set up to be the future of Mortal Kombat based on the MKX ending. I mean, come on, she defeats this possessed version of Shinnok. Clearly, Cassie is taking the reins of the Cage name. She does her mom's moves. She does her dad's moves. She has that humor. She has the special ops, you know, aspect to her as well. She's a nice mix of both. And I can see where Johnny might make a gigantic sacrifice to save either his daughter or his friends inside the story. I mean, come on, Johnny and Sonya are probably getting up there in age as well. Sonya is probably just sitting back commanding people because she's like the general inside the lore, right? Johnny is still like going out there on missions and stuff. So I can see where Johnny gets caught up in a situation and he has to pick between himself or his daughter. It's Johnny. He's not a coward. I think he's going to definitely pick his daughter. And I think this might be the end for Johnny Cage fans. And I'm sorry. I love him, but... I think they need to do something like that too, uh, to really emphasize the fact that Cassie is the feature. Have him give his daughter, like, the perfect, you know, reason to go on without him. I just, I'm, I'm hoping for something epic like that. That'd be so sick to see Johnny Cage in, like, an epic battle, sacrificing himself for the betterment of the Earth Realm. I want to see it. Let's do it. Now, at the 10th spot is a 3D era character we've not seen in a long time. It's also a female. That being none other than Natara, a character I think has a bunch of potential. She's the only vampire to exist inside the Mortal Kombat lore, which is insane to me because nobody really has a lot of love for her. I mean, do they? I don't see a lot of Natara love. I think she has a bunch of potential. A vampire, an MK, come on. Seeing her old fatalities where she like jumps on people and sucks blood from their face and their neck, like it's just, it, it's the makings of pretty crazy and over-the-top fatalities. She has those pretty kick-ass hook swords too. So Natara, please make a return. We're also entering like that Deadly Alliance deception territory. So I would love to see Natara back inside a Mortal Kombat game. One of those 3D era characters I've always loved and I really hope that maybe, just maybe, she makes it inside of Mortal Kombat 11. Moving on to the number 11 spot, we have Ermac, one of the cooler ninjas to ever be introduced. And though he got kicked around and was part of like Kotokan's crew, I think there's still some untapped potential for Ermac. Of course, he has one of the cooler movesets inside of all of Mortal Kombat using his telekinesis powers. So hey, Ermac is cool. He's a ninja. We love ninjas. Let's just make sure he doesn't get his ass kicked every time he's inside of the story. Please, can we do that for us maybe? Please, maybe, please. Moving on to the number 12 spot, it's Liu Kang. Come on, what is a Mortal Kombat game without the poster boy of Mortal Kombat? Outside of Scorpion, it's Liu Kang. 
Number 13 spot, Katana. It's Liu Kang's partner. Of course, we now have this brand new Deadly Alliance. These two possessed evil revenant versions of Katana and Liu Kang. I'm very curious to see where that goes. And it's MK11. They play such a major role inside Mortal Kombat X. Why would they not be inside of Mortal Kombat 11? Moving on to number 14, another 3D character, none other than Havoc. Thankfully, he's a character that got a bunch of love inside the MKX comics, and though he was killed, come on again, we have the whole time-bending aspect, we can bring back dead characters. His blood magic story inside the comics were insane, almost as insane as he is. Of course, he's so insane, Havoc breaks his own bones and his body inside of his moveset and his gameplay. This dude inside of Mortal Kombat 11 would be so sick. Havoc is a character that has so much potential. Please give us Havoc. The number 15 spot belongs to the Frost. Of course, Frost being the apprentice of Sub-Zero. She does make an appearance inside of Mortal Kombat X with a few cameos. Her design looks pretty sick in MKX, so I'd love to see that inside of MK11. Sub-Zero is my favorite Mortal Kombat character of all time, so maybe I'm biased here, but uh, Frost, I want to see her inside of Mortal Kombat 11. She was only inside of Armageddon Deadly Alliance. Like, come on, what's that? Need some love for Frost. The number 16 spot belongs to Shang Tsung, with Quan Chi being killed by Scorpion. This game's gonna need a sorcerer, so why not Old Faithful Shang Tsung? Now, last time we saw him, he was getting his soul transferred to Sindel back in MK9. So, is he officially dead? We really don't know. Is he? Then again, we have the whole time-bending aspect so we can bring back these dead characters. He does make an appearance inside of a few endings, so hey, Shang Tsung, we miss you. Come back. Just give us... The Deadly Alliance costume, that costume was so sick. Shang Tsung, MK11, make it happen. Number 17 spot belongs to Baraka, and I understand, again, another dead character, but he's always just been my personal favorite. Back in Mortal Kombat Deception, I used Sub-Zero and I used Baraka. Baraka is the shit. He gets treated like shit, but he is the shit. So we need Baraka back. Seeing that Tarkata variation on Alien, it was fun to use. I wish that would have been for, again, Baraka. And of course, if it's not Baraka, Maybe introduce us to a new Tarkadin. That would work for me too. If it's not Baraka, give us somebody else to take that Baraka mantle. That's something else they could do. Making our way to the 18th spot on my wish list here. That belongs to Cassie Cage. I do not have Sonya on my wish list. She is honorable mention, but if we're not gonna have Sonya, we gotta have her daughter. We gotta have Cassie, of course. She is the future of Mortal Kombat. I mean, based on the story mode for Mortal Kombat X. They're really putting all their uh, their marbles into Cassie, so it would be really weird to not have Cassie on this list. So yeah, Cassie, I love her. She's got the number 18 spot. Going to the number 19 spot, though, belongs to Scarlet. Of course, Scarlet made her debut back in Mortal Kombat 9 as a DLC character, so she's never been on a main roster. She does have a pretty big role inside the MKX comics, and though she is, I guess, killed essentially by Ermac in the comics, she's made of blood. Her fatality is back in Mortal Kombat 9 where she's just sitting there like bathing in blood and like drinking the blood. Like that's some next level stuff. So I would love to see that again in Mortal Kombat 11. I sound so gross saying stuff like that, but I, it, it's cool. It's great. So Scarlet, the blood ninja, Shao Kahn or whoever's the big bad, get some more blood and let's create another Scarlet if we have to because she is so kick-ass. Moving to the 20 spot though, the 20 spot belongs to Aaron Black. He is like... I don't know, he's like John Wayne inside the Mortal Kombat universe with a mix of like Mad Max. I love Aaron Black. Between him and Striker characters who like are known to use guns, I'm picking Aaron Black. He's a lot more badass than the guy who has a baton. So yeah, Aaron Black, loved him inside of Mortal Kombat X. Here's to hoping he's not going to be a pushover inside of Mortal Kombat 11. Moving to the number 21 spot though, that belongs to Takeda again. Another one of the combat kids that really has a bunch of potential. He's the son of Kenshi, and he's trained by Scorpion. Like, what more could you ask for? He probably has some of the coolest weapons ever inside of Mortal Kombat game. Those whips are so sick. Kind of like Ivy and Soul Calibur 6. I love Takeda. I really hope, like Cassie, he is the future of Mortal Kombat. Moving on to the number 22 spot. Belongs to a Cyber Ninja, that being Cyrax. I have Cyrax over Sector. The green net has always been like my personal favorite over the, you know, Sector's homing missile. It's a toss-up. I like both, but Cyrax just gets the W for me. Um, yeah, I picked Mustard, but I, I would love to have both. But if I had to pick one, I'm picking Cyrax. Moving on to the 23rd spot, that belongs to Kung Lao, of course, he is the right-hand man of Lucane. So with this brand new deadly alliance of Katana and Lucane, maybe Kung Lao does something, I don't know, important this time around, and he dies in the process of defending both Katana and Lucane. I don't know, Kung Lao is getting up there in age as well. Maybe he makes the ultimate sacrifice for his best friend, Lucane. 
the number 24 spot belongs to Kotal Khan. Kotal, of course, being the ruler of Outworld, despite the fact that he's constantly in war with Earthrealm, invading back and forth, and there's just like a bunch of drama between Outworld and Earthrealm. If we're gonna have the whole time bending aspect in the story of Mortal Kombat 11, maybe Outworld and Earthrealm finally set aside their bullshit differences and they work together to kill this big bad being introduced for Mortal Kombat 11. I wanna see Kotal Khan do a face turn, not be a complete bad guy like Shao Kahn. That, my friends, that would be really cool. The number 25 spot belongs to Sindel because she legit killed pretty much 99.9% .9 of the MK9 roster in the story mode in the span of 45 seconds. I'm not making this up. So because of that, put her inside of Mortal Kombat 11 and give me a chance to perform every finisher on her body because she legit killed the entire roster in 45 seconds. It was horrible. Why? Just why? The number 27 spot belongs to a 3D era character by the name of Drawman. Again, another one of those 3D era characters that has a lot of potential based on his design alone. He's rocking that mask. That mask should be something that just people were afraid of. Of course, Drawman used to have this projectile where he would throw flies at his opponent. I'm not making this up and for that reason alone. Drawman has my vote for Mortal Kombat 11. The number 28 spot belongs to, again, another 3D era character, another personal favorite, that being Hataru, a character that believes in nothing but law and order. So I want to see Hataru butt heads with this dark Raiden. One guy is on a power trip, one guy believes in law and order. I think that would make for some pretty interesting dialogue back and forth. Hataru has a kick-ass character design. I loved him back in the day. Love those flags on his back, so I really hope Hotaru has a chance to redeem himself inside a game like MK11. The number 29 spot belongs to an OG character in Reptile. Of course, he gets his ass kicked all throughout the MKX story, being part of Kotal Khan's crew. So I'm hoping that we get like maybe a redemption story for Reptile where he's not just a pushover because I hate that. I just hate how Reptile's always been a lackey for people. This is the same character that becomes Onaga inside of an ending in Deadly Alliance. So uh, maybe they should revisit that and introduce Onaga through Reptile. That would work. The final few slots, number 30 is Raiden, 31 is Scorpion, 32 is Shao Kahn. Again, characters confirmed to be on the roster. I kind of have some honorable mentions. We have Kenshi, Kano, Jax, Cabal, Sonya, Nightwolf, and Sector. Guys, this was super hard to sit down and just debate who deserved to spawn the roster. I also left four spots, number 33, 34, 35, and 36. The new characters being introduced for the first time inside of MK through Mortal Kombat 11. Maybe you see Kano's son in one of these new character slots. That would work out for me. And of course, 37, 38, 39, and 40. Those four slots being guest characters. Every Mortal Kombat game is now getting guest characters, at least four. So number 37 belongs to Pennywise. Of course, the new It movie is dropping next year. So cross promotion to make some sense. This dude can shapeshift into how many different things? He has a mouth almost as bad as Melina's. Pennywise inside of Mortal Kombat seems just, it's the perfect opportunity. So I really hope they don't miss this up. Number 38 is gonna be Michael Myers, of course. Halloween movie just dropped not too long ago. We had Jason, we had Freddy. You gotta have another iconic horror star in the series like Michael Myers. It only makes sense. You had Jason, you had Freddy. You just got to have Michael. Number 39 belongs to the Terminator, who at one point in time was almost DLC for Mortal Kombat X. If I'm not mistaken, I think next year there's also a new Terminator movie dropping. So again, some more cross promotion. And the number 40 spot, the last character in the roster, belongs to the most requested guest character of all time in Mortal Kombat history, that being none other than Spawn. That is a character every single one watching, I know in their heart, wants to see inside of MK11 Spawn. We've been waiting for how long now? Since MK9? Can we please get Spawn? Please? That is my dying wish. Spawn in MK11. But guys, that is all I got for y'all today. Again, Sub-Zero, Smoke, Rain, Noob, Fujin, Jade, Serena, Molina, Johnny, Natara, Ermac, Lucane, Katana, Havoc, Frost, Shang Tsung, Baraka, Cassie, Scarlet, Aaron Black, Takeda, Cyrax, Kung Lao, Kotal Kahn, Sindel, Shaman, Hataru, Reptile, Raiden, Scorpion, Shao Kahn, 
Pennywise, Michael Myers, the Terminator, and Spawn. I think it's a pretty well-rounded roster. I kind of got a mix of everything there. So hopefully you guys agree with the majority of my characters here again. I'm sorry if your character did not make the final cut. This was just so hard. So damn hard for me to do to finish. So if you stuck with me through all 20 minutes, you're the man. I'll love you for if you can. Please take one second, drop a like on the video, of course. Subscribe for some more MK11 content. Until next time, I've been your host. I've been Dynasty. You guys take care. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.